Hello friends, so welcome back to your own channel that is we are in techno world and in today's video I would tell you about the round robin scheduling algorithm okay that is very important in case of the CPU scheduling so uh, in case of round robin scheduling algorithm I would tell you like how to find out uh, like the completion time the turnaround time waiting time and the response time okay so for that purpose you just note down this question in which we are having four processes that is p1 p2 p3 and p4 and for that purpose the arrival time is given and the burst time is also given right uh, okay in case of round robin scheduling algorithm the main important term is the time quantum right what is the main term as in case of FCFS like we just follow one rule that take the process who came first obviously that would be right first just like that in case of uh, like priority scheduling algorithm we were having the priority queue okay but in case of round robin scheduling we are having one time quantum that is uh, that that would be already given to you people okay so in case of this the given time quantum is 2 the given time quantum is 2 that means the CPU would be allotted for two quantum of time, right? The CPU would be allotted to each and every process for two quantum of time, okay? So this is the main important thing. And one thing more that round robin scheduling algorithm could not be non-preemptive, right? It is always the preemptive version, okay? It could not be the non-preemptive, okay? So, uh, and one more thing in case of round robin, that is, the ready queue right in case of the other cpu scheduling algorithm like ready to maintain the ready queue is the choice right means uh, like there was uh, no mandatory thing like you just draw the ready queue but in case of round robin scheduling algorithm you have to properly maintain the ready queue because if the sequence would be changed then obviously your uh, like gain chart would be wrong okay so for that purpose the sequence is very very important so don't forget to man properly maintain that ready queue okay so first of all you just try to maintain the running queue okay so which process has been arrived first process number p1 okay process number p1 has been arrived first and even though in a ready queue first of all the process number p1 has been arrived after that it has been allotted like the cpu has been allotted to the like process number p1 that means it has came into this running queue right this is your running queue this is your running queue okay so uh like as the cpu would be allotted for two quantum of time and what is the burst time of p1 that is five so out of this five Right, the two, two quantum of time would be allotted to process number P1. Right, so the remaining time is, like, uh, it is 3. The remaining time is 3. Okay, now between 0 to 2, is there any process who has been arrived? Yes, process number P2 and P3 has been arrived. So, we would write over here that after this P1, P2 and P3 are right. Okay, so, uh, like, after that, as you could check, like after this P2 and P3, right? Means like as soon as the CPU would be uh, like allotted to this process number P2, right? Then P1 would be preempted, right? Means context switching would be performed over here. This process number P1 would be preempted. So it would come back into this ready queue. It would come back by preempting into this ready queue, okay? After that, like uh, CPU would be allotted to P2 only for two quantum of time. So, what is the burst time of P2? That is 4. So, for the rest of the two quantum of time, it would be like allotted to it. Okay. Now, between 2 to 4. Between 2 to 4, is there any new process who has been arrived? Between 2 to 4? Yes, process number P4. Okay. So, we would write P4 over here. Okay. Now, we would uh, like obviously, we would process uh, into this uh, like running queue. So, now the turn is of P3. So, P3, uh, like the CPU would be allotted to P3. Now, what is the burst time of it? And that is 2. Okay. So, that means it would be completely executed. This process number P3 has been completely executed. Right. 
Now, is there any new process? No, there is no new process, right? But like as you could see that like as we have taken this P2 into uh, here, right? After that, the remaining time of P2 is still left. That is true. That means this would be preempted, right? This would be preempted. That means after this P4, P2 would come over here. P2 would come over here, right? So like the sequence is mandatory, right? Don't forget to maintain the sequence, right? Otherwise, your running queue would be wrong, okay? So after that, we would move forward to P1. What was the remaining time of P1? Remaining time was 3. So out of this 3, we would take 2 one of time. That means it would be 6 plus 2. That means 8. Right? Now only 1 is left. In case of P1, 1 is left. But after like as soon as we would allot the CPU to P4, we would allot the CPU to P4, that this P1 would be preempted. That means by preempting, it would come back into the like this ready queue. Right? As I am just saying, every time as the sequence is mandatory. Right? So you just try to maintain this ready queue properly. Because in round robin, there is a very big role of this ready queue. Okay? So after that, like we were here. So like to P4, the CPU would be allotted. And what is the burst time of it? That is 1. Only 1. And we could like allot two quantum of time. Right? But in case of P4, only one quantum of time is there. So that is why it has been completely executed by adding one we could like move further. Now this has been obviously executed. Now the turn is of P2. Right? So in case of P2 what was the remaining time? In case of P2 we were having two quantum of time. So that is still left. So it would be 11. Right? Now P2 is also completely executed. Now the left process is P1. And in case of P1, the remaining time was 1. Right? So now we would take this P1 over here. And this 1 would be added into this. That means the P1 would also uh, like have been executed over here. That means with the help of this running queue, we could maintain our completion time. So what is the completion time over here? The P1 completion time is 12. The P2 completion time is 11. The P3 completion time is 6 and uh, the uh, like process number P4 completion time is 9. Just like that, you just uh, maintain like turnaround time is equals to uh, like the completion time minus arrival time. So the completion time minus arrival time, that means it would be 12 minus 0, 12. 11 minus 1, 10. 6 minus 2, it would be 4. 9 minus 4, it would be 5, right? Now, waiting time to calculate this, we are having the formula that is turn around time minus burst time. So, turn around time minus the burst time. 12 minus 5, right? It would be 7. 10 minus 4, it would be 6. 4 minus 2, it would be 2. 5 minus 1, it would be 4, right? Now response time is equals to the CPU first allotment time. First allotment time minus the arrival time. Okay. So to P1 the first allotment time was 0. 0 minus 0? Zero, 0. The CPU first allotment time to P2 was 2. 2 minus 1. So it would be 1. Then the CPU first allotment time to P3 was 4. 4 minus 2. 2 and the CPU first allotment time to P4 was 8, 8 minus 4, 4, right? So just like that, we could like uh, solve out the numerical under round robin scheduling algorithm. So do practice of it, take, uh, like you just take some other numericals as well, right? So till then do pra practice of it. So thank you, thank you so much.